Hello, everyone. Brian Lagunas here. If you've ever heard of Prism for Xamarin Forms and you're curious on how do you get started or how do you create your first app using Prism for Xamarin Forms, well, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know to create your very first Xamarin Forms app using Prism. This video is sponsored by Infragistics, fast and beautiful UI controls and time saving tools for developers and UX pros. They really do provide the fastest path to amazing experiences. If you're looking for the fastest grids and charts on the market, or just looking for some new modern components to spruce up your application, look no further. Give Infragistics a try. Open up your favorite web browser, navigate to bit.ly slash prism infragistics, and tell them that Prism sent you. The more people that use this link, the more videos that I get to record. So let's give Infragistics a big thank you, visit their site, and check out their products. The easiest way to get started writing a Xamarin Forms application using Prism is to use the Prism template pack. In order to use that, you have to install it. So let's go to Tools, Extensions and Updates, click Online, and then search for Prism template pack. When you see the Prism template pack, you'll see the nice little Prism icon here so you know it's official. Go ahead and install that. I already have it installed, so I see a little checkbox here. Once that's installed, you'll have some new options from your project menu. So let's go ahead and say File, New Project, and scroll down to where you see the Prism category. Expand this and you'll see we have a category for WPF and a category for Xamarin Forms. Let's start with Xamarin Forms. So I'm going to create a blank Prism application, and I'm going to name this My First App, and hit OK. Now, the first thing you're going to see is a Prism project wizard that allows you to choose the platforms that you want to target. For example, I don't really care about UWP right now or iOS. I just want to create an Android application. So I'm only going to select Android. Next, I'm going to choose my container. Now, a container is required by Prism in order to function. We'll cover containers in a different video. For now, I'm going to choose Dry IOC because it's a very high performing and easy to use container for Xamarin Forms. I'm going to go ahead and create project, and then I'm going to wait for Visual Studio to do its thing. OK, so my application has been created, and my NuGet packages have been restored automatically. You'll see at first we have our main project head here called My First App. This is the .NET standard application. I know this because I can right click and say edit my first app.csproj. And then that's going to open up the csproj file. And look how pretty this new SDK project format is. It's beautiful. And we can see it's targeting .NET standard 2.0. And we're using uh, prism.dryioc.forms. And we see the version. Perfect. Let's go ahead and set the Android project as the startup project. I'm going to do a build. Okay, now that my build has succeeded, I'm going to run the application in my Android emulator. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. Once that's all done, the emulator pops up and you can see a very simple main page with the text, welcomes to Xamarin Forms and Prism. Let's go ahead and stop the application and take a look at the anatomy of a Prism application. Let's start by going into the entry point of the app, which is the app.xaml. When you open up the app.xaml, you're going to see that this is a little different than your basic Xamarin Forms application XAML file. First, notice that there is a new namespace for Prism. In this specific scenario, we're using the prism.dryioc namespace from the prism.dryioc.forms assembly. In the future, this will be simplified to just a schema URL like http prismlibrary.com. But for now, this is what we have to deal with. Once you have the namespace declared, you then replace the Xamarin Forms application with the Prism application. Everything else will be the exact same for how you define resources and all the XAML goodness that you have in a normal Xamarin Forms app remains the absolute same. The only difference is that you're now using a Prism application. All right, next, let's go ahead and open up the app.xaml.cs file. 
Now this file is a little different than what you may be used to if you're developing a standard Xamarin Forms application. There are two methods here that require your attention. The first is the on initialized. You can think of this method as a replacement for the CTOR of your standard Xamarin Forms application. This is the method in which you're going to do the majority of your work. This happens when all the Prism stuff has been completed, registered, all their services registered, everything that Prism needs to do to set up this application has been completed. And this is when you're going to run your code. For example, initialize component. This method has to be called first in the on initialized method here. Okay. If you try to put this in the constructor, uh, like you would in a normal Xamarin Forms app, it wouldn't work right. Okay. Also, this is where you're going to navigate to your main page or the initial page of your application. This is equivalent to in Xamarin Forms, main page equals new my main page. Okay. The next method you really care about is register types. Now, register types is used to register any of your views for navigation or any services that you're going to be using inside your view models. We're not going to get into that in this video, but just be aware that this is where those types of registrations will occur. In this example, you'll see that we're registering the default Xamarin Forms navigation page for navigation. And then we have a main page with a main page view model that we are registering for navigation. When we start the application, everything's registered. These get registered. The application runs. The navigation service makes a call to navigate a sync. And we navigate to a key called navigation page slash main page. Now that navigation page matches up to that navigation page to this registration. And this main page matches up to this main page registration. We'll have another video that goes more in detail in navigation, but just be aware that's kind of how this application is set up. Next, let's go ahead and look at the view that's created for us. As you can see, it's a basic content page. We have a binding title. So that's assuming we do have a view model. That's where that exists. And then we have a label with welcome to Xamarin Forms and Prism. So let's go ahead and look at our view model that's created. We have a main page view model that's provided for us. And you'll notice a couple things. First, we're setting the title to main page. So if we look at our main page, we're binding the title of this page to title. That means when the application ran in the emulator, you saw that the, the header in the title was main page. So that worked properly. We can also see that we are deriving from a view model base class that is created with this template. We are passing in the iNavigation service to the base view model class. So let's go ahead and take a look into that. This is just a basic view model base class. Feel free to come in here, remove it, modify it, do what you have to do to make it fit your needs. It's just meant as a starting point to get you started. So we have a property for navigation service. We are injecting that into the constructor. That's why we are passing it to the base implementation here. And if we ever wanted to navigate, we can simply just call the navigation service property from the base class. We also implement iNavigationAware and iDestructible. Once again, we'll have more videos in the future covering the functionality of these interfaces. So let's go ahead and add a view and view model to this application. So let's go ahead and right click the views folder. I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to select Prism, Xamarin Forms, and let's add a Prism content page. And let's call this view A. Hit add. And let's notice a couple of things here. First off, we have our new view A. Here's our view A XAML here. And our view a view model was also created for us automatically. Not only that, if we come into our app.xaml.cs, we'll see that our view and view model were registered for us automatically as well. So that means I can go ahead and switch out main page for view a, come to my view a view model. Let's change this to view model base. 
Let's go ahead and ask for I navigation service. Make sure we pass that to our base implementation. And let's set our title to my view A. Next, let's go into our view A, our XAML here. We'll add a stack layout. We'll set the horizontal options to center and expand and the vertical options to center and expand. We'll throw a label inside of that. We'll set the text equal to binding title. And let's also set the title of the page to binding title. All right, so we've updated our navigation to navigation page slash view A. So the first page we're gonna see is view A. Let's go ahead and run our application and see what happens. Okay, so our emulator launched, our application launched, and now you can see our new view A, which is wrapped inside a navigation page, and our title and our label show bound to the value we set in our view model. That's how easy it is to get started with Prism for Xamarin Forms. If you'd like to learn more about Prism and how to build applications using WPF, Xamarin Forms, or UWP, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when new videos are published. Thanks for watching.